This is Next Radio 2017 with Broadcast Bionics. Hello, hello. My name is Sam Walker. I'm a broadcaster. I've worked on a bunch of radio stations across commercial radio and the BBC. I'm also a podcaster. I make What Goes On Here, a Northern Power Women podcast. And I also coach and represent various people uh, with my business, What Goes On Media. I started in radio about 16 years ago now, and I found a picture the other day of my first ever press shot. Look at me. Look at me. This is, this is what radio does to you after 15 years. Haggard. Let that be a warning to you. So thank you to Matt and James who got in touch and said, would you talk about a certain aspect of presenting? And I said, yes, I will. So what I want to talk to you about today is what radio can learn from... Horror films. Uh, so what can radio learn from horror films? Well, let's go back a stage first and know that everything that we do on the radio is a story, right? Everything on the radio is a story, whether it's an actual story about your personal life, something you've overheard in the supermarket, a bit of showbiz gossip, maybe uh, the travel news, the weather. It's all a story. And stories allow us to feel a certain way. But Quite often we hear a story, we might engage with it on a certain level, but it just doesn't punch through. And why is that? Why don't people tell stories on the radio in a really, really engaging, connecting way? This is Jack Wood. He's a brilliant presenter. What he's about to say is not his level of broadcasting. He has done this for me, so don't judge him on this. But I wanted, he's very kindly provided an example of how to tell a story in, a, in an OK way. I'm Jack Wood, and when I left work yesterday, I had to pop into town to go to the dentist, and I couldn't find anywhere to park, and I was running really late, and I was really stressed, and eventually I parked, and I was running up to the street, and just as I got to the door of the dentist, I leant down into my bag to get my phone, and at that exact moment, a massive seagull flew over my head and deposited some, well, seagull business in such a way that it went right down the neck of my chair, and I was so late that I just had to go into the dentist and lie back in the chair straight away, and I could feel it oozing down my back. Awful. So this is an example of a story that actually we can probably all relate to. A really annoying or horrible thing happens at a really, really inconvenient time. And that was a story actually told to me in a coaching session. But how could it have been better? How could it have connected with the audience more? Because that's what radio is about. It's about connecting on a really basic level with your audience. Well, let us explore how it might be better through horror films. <laughs> So what do horror films do really, really well? They emotionally engage with the audience on a really fantastic level. And let's just picture the scene. If you look at the picture behind me and imagine a fairly typical horror film type scene. So you're walking through the woods with a friend really late at night and you really wish you hadn't taken the shortcut now. You're terrified and the sun went down a lot faster than you thought it would. And now you can just see your breath in the moonlight as you nervously talk to your friend. He suddenly stops. Wait, he says, I can hear something. I'm sure I can hear something around out there. What can it be? You'd like to run away. You need to run away, but you're completely frozen to the spot with fear. And suddenly you see, what's that coming out from behind the tree? Oh, it's the escape psychopath. Oh, blood, death. Ah. So, I mean, that's a fairly typical horror film scene, but you can imagine how engaging that is with the right cinematography and the lights and the camera and the rest of it. So let's break that down and work out three things that horror films do really well to really emotionally engage with an audience. The first thing they do, so not rocket science, music. They use music in such a brilliant, engaging way to set the tone of the scene. Because, of course, that scene behind you could sound equally like this. Ah, oh, romance, moonlight walks, a stolen kiss. Or, of course, like the scene we just heard as well of absolute horror and fear. So it just never fails to amaze me how many presenters do not use music and sound effects in order to enhance their stories, seeing as they're working in an audio medium, but they just don't use it. And I just want to give a little example of, of what music can do to really enhance. And I told a story recently about revisiting a childhood passion, and it was horse riding. I hadn't got on a horse for 20-odd years, a bit nervous about going, but I thought, I'll give it a go. And as soon as I got on that horse, I can tell you, I was tremendous. I was magnificent, cantering around the paddock like myself and the magnificent beast had never been separated. The wind in my hair, I was a horsewoman of the greatest. And I shouted to my friend, quick, video me, video me, you've got to video me on this horse, I look amazing, I need to put it on Facebook, Twitter, heck it needs to be broadcast on the nine o'clock news. And then I got off the horse and I went down and I looked on that video and... 
the horror completely hit me of that huge disconnect between what I thought was going on in my head and actually what a 40-something-year-old woman who hasn't been on a horse for 20 years looks like. And by using the music, not only did I need to use less words, but I allowed the audience to paint their own pictures and I allowed the listener to paint their own picture about what had taken place that day, which we shall never speak of again. So music's a really, really brilliant way that horror films can really engage. The second thing they do fantastically well is they put their audience, their viewer, right in the story. So we've all stood there and screamed at the girl in the bikini, don't go down the cellar steps. But once she does go down that cellar steps, quite often the camera is her eyes. You're walking down the cellar steps. You're looking around to see if the maniac leaps out from behind boxes. And well, why is that more effective? Well, it's, it's obvious because if you're experiencing something, of of course, you connect with it on a much more fundamental level than if you're watching someone else experience something. For example, this picture is so much more effective and engaging than this picture. Because in the first one, you're about to go down the roller coaster. The second one, you're watching someone else. So watching someone else experience something, of course, isn't as engaging and doesn't connect with you as much if you're experiencing it. And let's do another little example on that. Really simple to put a listener in a story, even if it's a story about you. And Valerie Geller, she's not here, but Valerie Geller has talked about this brilliantly, about how it's so easy just to put your listener in the middle of your story. Thank you to the wonderful Michael Blades for this example. I was on a date last night, really trying to impress this girl that I really like. I was trying to act cool, slipped over on some beer in the bar in front of everyone and felt like a right fool. So poor old Michael, we've stood there, we've gone, oh yeah, yeah he's, yeah, he's fallen over, he's embarrassed. There's that disconnect. However, you can just turn that story around really easily. Have you ever been on a date that's really made you nervous? You know, when you're trying to really impress someone, you know what it's like, you're trying to act all cool and you stroll into the bar with them, desperate to look good, and then in front of everyone, slip over in some spilt beer. So that just puts you in there. Have you ever felt this way? Have you ever felt nervous? We've all felt nervous. We've all tried to look cool. We've all tried to impress someone. And just by putting the listener in the middle of that story, it's a really effective way of just making the story connect with them even more, whatever that story may be. And the next thing that horror films do spectacularly well, I want to go back to the picture of the roller coaster because in this picture, I don't know about you, but when I, when I look at that, I get that <gasps> delicious feeling that you get just before you're about to go over the edge and experience that fall. And what's amazing is you know what that's going to feel like. And the anticipation of that feeling makes that feeling all the more powerful when you get to it. And again, this is what horror films do absolutely brilliantly. They tell you how they want you to feel at the very beginning of the scene. They headline that content with, hey, this is how we want you to feel by using camera work, sound effects, music lighting the works. And I could have called this story, in fact, what the X Factor can teach us about engaging with the audience on radio as well, because if you are there watching X Factor and there is that person who it's just their life's dream to be here and all they've ever wanted to do is sing and their budgie's dead and it's awful, as soon as you hear just a couple of bars of this song, you know they're going to boot camp, you know they're going to get through already, because you know how this song ends. But it doesn't matter that you already know, because if you engage with X Factor, as millions of people all around the world do, the anticipation of their joy actually makes the joy you feel for them even stronger. So it's so easy just to connect with your audience on that way. As I said at the beginning, everything on the radio is a story. Everything. Tell your listener how you want them to feel. You're going to be biting your own hand off in frustration when I tell you what I'm going to, you, you, the news I heard today. Or if you snort in public when you laugh, you better get off the bus now. Whatever it might be, tell the audience how you want them to feel. Radio is such an emotive medium. Why don't we harness that power a little bit more? I mean, look at Louis. He's, he's moved, and he's going to kick him out by judges' houses. It's tragic. Forget the budgie. So every single story that we tell evokes a feeling whether it's happiness, sadness, shock, disbelief, anger, fear. So tell your audience how you want them to feel. Engage them in that way. And then, as I said, when that feeling then arrives, when the story comes to its climax, the audience will go along with you for the ride. So how might Jack's hilarious seagull poo down the backstory just have sounded a little bit different? Hiya, I'm Jack Wood, and that is the latest from Sigrid. It's called Plot Twist. And I just want to say sorry to you right now, especially if you're eating your breakfast. Honestly, you're going to want to put that spoon right down right now because I've got something I want to share with you. Something that you probably experienced yourself. And probably after hearing this, you're going to want to go get a shower because it does contain the word ooze. Yeah. 
So again, just headlining your content, telling your audience how you want them to feel, making it as much about them as about you is a way that you can really, really connect. And the people I've worked with on this say, well, people engage more, they phone up more, they text more, they get in touch more. I get more entries into competitions. and It works. It works to really connect your audience. So three things to take away, which I'm going to have to turn around to look at because I can't see that. Uh, music and sound effects can give your story more impact. Use them. You work in radio, you work in audio. Put your listeners in the middle of the story. Make them walk down the cellar steps. And don't be afraid to tell your listeners how you want them to feel at the start of the story. Thanks.